Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. On today's episode, we're going to be taking a short little flight in the Citation Longitude. But more importantly, we're going to be going over all the different systems on the inside, as well as showing you how to load a flight plan, use auto throttle, and much, much more. So stick around, we've got a lot to go over on today's episode of 2020 Flight Simmers. So welcome to the cockpit, everyone, of the beautiful Cessna Citation Longitude. Oh, and if you are new to the channel, don't forget to go down below and hit that subscribe button and tick that little bell. And if this video does help you out today in any way, go ahead and smash on that thumbs up button. It really helps us get found by viewers like yourselves. So now before we get this thing fired up, I'm going to go over the flight plan that we're going to be using for today. And by the way, I will post a link of the flight plan we're using today down in the description. So if you would like to follow along, it will be down there for you to do so. So for today's flight, we're going to be departing Durango La Plata and we're going to be arriving at Denver International. Now we are going to be using VNAV on this flight, so we're going to show you how to program all that here in just a second. So before we power this baby up, let's head down here to the electrical panel. We've got a couple things that we need to go over here. Now if you are new to flying the Cessna Longitude, you're going to notice these little white lines on each side of the electrical panel here. Now a lot of people don't really understand what these are for or they just think they're there for the fun of it. But they actually do mean something and we're going to go over that real quick before we actually turn the power on. Now you have to look at this as a left hand side and a right hand side electrical panel. So if we look at the right hand side here, you're going to see the right hand battery connects to this little white bar as well as the external power. So that means the right battery and the external power both going to feed this white line here. Same thing for the left hand side, everything over here that connects to this white bar down here. So the left battery, the APU gen, the left gen and the standby all are going to power everything on this circuit that this white line attaches to. Now in the center here, we have what's called a bus tie. Now this pretty much is a circuit breaker that is going to close and open, meaning it is going to connect or disconnect from both sides. Now what I mean by that is I can essentially turn on the left battery and power the entire aircraft on the left battery if I have the bus tie closed. So let's go ahead and show you what I'm talking about here and turn on the left battery. So we just give it a good old tap. You're going to see it light up in the on position. The bus tie will be in the closed position. And if you look at these little white bars, they are connecting to that closed illuminated light on the bus tie. So now you can see everything is on in the aircraft. And if I go ahead and open the bus tie, there you go. Everything on the right hand side of the plane has now shut off to get that to come back on again. You can just close that bus tie and there you go. The systems will fire back up. So when you see all these lines on overhead panels or any electrical systems on other planes, now you know they actually do something and you can, it's kind of a roadmap as to what this electrical system is feeding, so to speak. All right, so now that we got the left-hand battery, we're gonna turn on the right-hand battery. We do not have any external power. If we did, we would have a little avail light that's gonna show up down here. Now the other thing we want to turn on is the standby power, which is right there. Now all of these are going to be in the on position and normal, so we don't really have to worry about those right now. So now that we got some power going on in the aircraft, we're going to go over a little familiarization of the cockpit before we go any further. Now the first thing we're going to take a look at is your autopilot panel. We're going to work from left to right so that we can go through this pretty quick. On the left here, it has your flight director button. If you tap it on, you'll see the little white light show up here. You'll also see the little flight director icon on your PFD screen. Right below that is your course knob. So if you're going to be using VORs or nav frequencies, 
then you can adjust your course to those. Right here would be your vertical speed. This is what's going to set your vertical speed to go either up or down. The VNAV button, well, you can scratch that one off because that one doesn't work at all. Next to that, we have the flight level change. So with flight level change, how that's going to work is you're going to set a speed and the plane will then pitch in the up or down direction to try to attain that particular speed. Now, if we take a look at the speed knob itself, we have the knob and then behind the knob, we have a little switch here that we can turn to FMS or manual. Now, if it's in the FMS mode, you can't turn this knob and it will not adjust anything down here on your speed setting. To be able to manually adjust, you need to switch this over to the manual. Now, when you turn your speed dial, you can see the speed dial moving down on the GPS unit. Now, some people might say, well, what would I actually want to use this for in practical flight? Well, I'm going to tell you. If we have this in FMS mode, while we are ascending, I can then hit the flight level change button and it will maintain the current speed in which we're going so we don't have to actually set a speed in here so that's probably when you would want to use that okay next we're going to come here to the very center and this is going to be your main autopilot on and off button to the right of that is going to be our nav button that's going to activate the nav guidance for the autopilot. Below that is our half bank button. What this will do is this will prevent the aircraft from going into a full bank. Next to that, we have the heading engagement and we also have the heading knob. So if you take a look at the heading down here, we're able to move it left and right. Now, if you wanna sync the heading up to your current heading, all you gotta do is push on that knob and boom, there you go. It has now sunk. Is that the correct word? Synced? Sunk? I don't know. It is now synced our heading to our current heading that we're on. So next to that, we have the approach button, and that's what we're going to use once we're on our ILS approach. We'll get into that later on in the flight. The BC is the back course button. I don't really use that that much. Next to that is the altitude hold. When you're at an altitude that you want to capture, all you have to do is smash on that altitude hold button and it will then capture that current altitude. Now, because we're on the ground, we're not actually gonna activate any altitude hold, but we are going to rotate our altitude knob. And as you see, the altitude bug is changing on the PFD. We are gonna set this to the altitude that we want to ascend to. Next to that, we have the right course for the right-hand side and the flight director for the right-hand side. So now that we've taken a look at the autopilot panel, let's take a look at the PFD screen. Now, right down here to the left is our PFD settings, and everything on this particular screen here is going to directly affect everything on our PFD screen. So if we turn the traffic map off, you can see the traffic map just disappeared from our PFD. We can also set our speed bugs by tapping on the speed bugs, and then I just like to set them all on. Now you can hit the home button. Now the nav source button here is going to tell the GPS what source it's gonna use for its autopilot guidance. So in nav one, it's gonna follow whatever frequency that you have in the nav one frequency but we're not gonna be following a nav source right now. We're gonna be following an FMS, the GPS course. So we're gonna make sure that says FMS. Down here in bearing one and two, I just like to leave them as nav one and nav two. Now the one thing you wanna take a look at right above nav one and nav two, it has two particular different style of lines. That is how you're going to know what frequency is pulling up here. So if you're trying to monitor two particular frequencies, they have two different styles of lines so that you can decipher which one you're looking at on your HSI unit here. The next thing that we can set is our minimums for the airport. And in the minimum screen, you can set either a barrow minimum or a radio altitude minimum. Let's go ahead and set that up right now for our barometric 5527 and that is gonna be our minimums for the 
destination airport. Down at the bottom here, it has a couple of menus here for PFD map settings. And if you click on that, you can turn on or off your inset. You can also turn on or off the traffic, as well as some other functions here for that particular map. I'm not gonna go over all of these particular functions here. You can kind of play with them. You really can't hurt anything. Now, the one last setting here that is kind of important is the PFD settings menu. And this is where you're gonna be able to turn on the angle of attack. And that's gonna be right here. Now below that, we can select our wind option, and I like to always use option three. You can also select your barrow units as well as enable meters overlay for everything. So if you click on that, if you look over here, it will now show you in meters our altitude. Now at the top of this screen, we can also access all of our frequencies. So our transponder here is on the right. So if you tick on the 1200, you can enter whatever transponder squawk code that ATC gives you, hit the enter button, and now you've entered that. But now you do have to turn the transponder in the on position or altitude reporting. To do that, you just tick on the button above it, and now you can click either altitude reporting on or taxi. So we're just gonna flip it on in the altitude reporting mode for right now, just to get that going. And over here on the left is gonna be your audio and radio menu. So if you tick on that, now here is where you can access all of your nav frequencies and comm frequencies. Now for the comm frequencies, it's a little bit easier to get to. So if you wanted to change your COM1 frequency, all you need to do is tap on the standby and it will bring up your COM frequency dial pad here. <laughs> and then you can enter the frequency you want once you get to what you want. So let's just enter any random frequency here. Once you select that, you can hit the transfer button and it will now transfer that COM frequency up into COM1. Now the other cool feature that the COM unit has on it is if you're on frequency with air traffic and you wanna listen to the ATIS of the arrival airport, well, it's pretty cool because you can set up your ATIS frequency in COM2, and if you come right down here to the MON button and tap on that, now you can listen to COM1 and COM2 on the radio. When you're done listening to the ATIS, all you have to do is tap that again, and it will revert or divert right back to COM1. So I think that is pretty cool, especially if you don't want to leave frequency when you're in the air. So the next panel we're going to take a look at here is our lighting panel, and that's right here at the top. I think all this is pretty self-explanatory. You've got your landing lights, taxi, recog, and your pulse light. Here's some panel lights, and we have the emergency lights there. While we're up here, we are going to get some lights on. So we're going to turn on the recognition lights, and we're also going to turn on the tail lights over there. And the reason why we're going to do that is because we're probably running low on power now. So to start up the APU, all we need to do is come down here to the center console, right to the APU button, and we're going to turn that to the start and release. Next, you want to make sure that your APU bleed right here in the center is in the normal position. Then we're going to step back up here to the center screen, and we can monitor the APU percentage as it spools up. Now, once that APU gets to about 100%, we're going to come down here to the APU gen, flip it in the reset position, and up in the on position. We are now operating on our APU power, and if you take a look down here to the battery amps, you see we are at a positive 7 amp load. I don't know how that's possible, but it's positive seven amps. And if you turn the APU off, see, you're now at a 52 amp draw. Okay, so we're gonna leave that on, make sure your bus tie stays in the closed position. And with that, we can now set up our flight plan. So So let's get down to the MFD screen and get our flight plan in place. Okay, so now taking a look at the MFD screen, let's go over just a couple little options here first because a lot of people are gonna wanna know how I got this active flight plan inset menu to populate here for the VNAV profile. So I'm just gonna show you that real quick. And if you go down here to the map settings, go down to inset window, right here there is a flight plan text you can turn that on or off. I always recommend to keep this on leg. You can also turn it to cumulative, 
but leg seems to be better for me. Now there's one other option in here that I like to make sure it's turned on. If you go down here to other, right here it says range to altitude. That is gonna give you a cool little arc for when you're going to achieve the set altitude in your autopilot. So that's a really cool handy feature when you need to get to a certain altitude by a certain waypoint. By the way, if anybody has any questions while we're going along here, please drop them down in the comments section and I will get to those as soon as I can. Now over here, it also has a speed bug button. And if you click on that, you can also turn all of those on or off right from there. All right, so now let's enter the flight plan into the G3000. To do that, all you need to do is a smack on that flight plan button. And as you can see, we are working with a clean slate. So the first thing we need to do is add the origin. And if you click on origin, we are at KDRO. So KDRO, hit the enter button. Perfect, got the origin. Now we're going to add the destination, and that is KD. Whoops, K-D-E-N, and hit enter. All right, perfect, so now we have our origin and destination in, now we're gonna add some en route waypoints. So to add our first waypoint, all we need to do is click right here on add en route waypoint, and that is it. Now we're gonna add the M-A-N-C-A waypoint, N-C-A, and then hit the enter button. Now, here's the cool thing. We are gonna be jumping on an airway right at M-A-N-C-A. So because of that, we are not gonna add an en route waypoint because we're gonna be hopping on an airway from this waypoint. So we're just gonna click on M-A-N-C-A. Now when you do that, it's gonna pull up a cool little menu here and all you're gonna do is hit on the load airway. Now right here, you're gonna tap on the airway button and we are gonna click on the Victor 187 airway. Now we just need to select an exit waypoint along this path. So we just click exit and we're gonna scroll all the way down to HAVWU and that's gonna be our exit waypoint. Now we gotta do is hit that load airway button and it has now loaded that entire airway at the top here. And if you wanna see all the different waypoints along that route, all you gotta do is tick on the airway button and then either collapse or expand the airway. So if you hit expand all, it will now expand the entire airway so you can see everything on that for you. And because there was only two waypoints along that airway, when we expand it, we really don't get much here. Now for us, we're gonna jump on another airway from the HAVWU waypoint. So what do you think we're gonna do here? We're not gonna click add and route waypoint. We're just gonna click on the HAVWU and then we're gonna click load airway. Again, we're gonna tap on the airway button and now we're gonna jump on the Victor 68 airway. Again, we'll tick on the exit button and now we're gonna pick our exit waypoint. Now, when you do click on exit, it's gonna bring up a bunch of different waypoints here. And as you can see, they're not in any alphabetic order. To do that, right here over underneath the exit button, you have sort A to Z. Just give that a click and it will now sort everything for you. So it'll make it a little bit easier to uh, figure out which one you need to pick. Okay, so the exit waypoint that we're looking for is ETL which is right here, and that happens to be a VOR. And then we're just gonna hit load airway, and now it's gonna load that entire airway in here. So now that the airways are entered, we really have no other waypoints along the route other than a arrival procedure. So now to add the arrival procedure, all we need to do is come right over here to the PROC button. Oh, and by the way, if you want to see if you've got your correct route up here on your menu, if you'd like to just take a quick glance at it, all you got to do is come right down here to flight plan options and then hit show on map, and that will show you the current flight plan that we have entered on the map. So I can confirm that that is exactly what I want it to look like for right now. But make sure that you untick that before you leave this page here, or you're going to have to go back to it and untick that. All right, so now let's add the arrival procedure. To do that, again, all we need to do is hit on the procedure button here and then tick on the arrival button. 
Now to add the correct arrival, we're just going to tick up here on arrival, and we're going to go all the way down until we see the T-Bar 3 arrival. There we go, the T-Bar 3, we entered that. Our transition is going to be at the SHNPS, and we're going to be entering runway 34 left. Now, a lot of people might ask, how did you get this information on, on how, what runway were you going to land at? How do you know that? Well, you need to figure out what runways the airports are using before you set up your flight plan. I'm going to show you a really easy way to do that right on little nav maps real quick. So as you can see, we're already loaded up here at the Durango La Plata. And if you right click on that, you can hit show location for the airport. Now when you do, right over here on the left hand side, if you scroll down to the weather, it will tell you which runways they are preferring for this airport. So again, if we do that for the destination airport, we can also do the same as if we come over here to the flight plan and right click on it, show information, and scroll down. Now I made this flight plan yesterday, and yesterday we were using runways 34 left and 34 right and today they've changed to 16 and 17 so we're still going to keep our flight plan that we had already set up but this is how you're going to figure out which runways to use when you're designing your flight plan so now that we have entered that information in oh and by the way if you're unsure about how to use little nav maps to create a flight plan I'll post a link down below for that as well, and you can check that video out, and that will very easily help you create a IFR flight plan. Okay, so let's get back to this, and now that we have all this information in here, we can also do the same thing by previewing this on the map. So if you hit the preview button and then show on map, it will bring up the entire arrival that we're going to be following. That is beautiful. Again, you want to make sure you go down to that preview button and turn that in the off position. Otherwise, you're going to have to go back and do it. So now that we know that's what we want to do, all you need to do is hit the load button and it will load that into our flight plan. Last and finally, we have to enter the approach. And to do that, we're just going to slap on the approach button. And right up here on approach, we're going to tap that with the left mouse and scroll all the way down to 34 left. Now we're gonna tick 34 left and now we have to select which transition we wanna use for this. And to do that, we're just gonna tick on transition and we're actually gonna be using the Eldora transition today. Again, we can also preview this on the map by just hitting that preview button and then show on map and it will show our intended track into runway 34 left. Great, so that seems to be perfect. Now all we gotta do is hit the load button, but remember, you gotta turn that show on map off. Okay, so now that we have everything loaded into our flight plan, let's go ahead and take a look at it by tapping on that flight plan option and then show on map, and there we go. That's our entire flight plan right there. Perfect, that's exactly what we want. Okay, so now we gotta take that off go back to the home screen. Now's the time we are gonna set up. VNAV. So if you're unsure of how to operate VNAV in the longitude, this is gonna be the section for you. Now to turn on the VNAV, you gotta go to the flight plan menu, go to the VNAV function, and then enable VNAV from that menu. Now, just by doing that doesn't really help you out much because if you go to your flight plan and just scroll down, you're going to see there's no flight restriction altitudes here. So because of that, VNAV won't really operate for you in this aircraft unless you manually put this information in. So I can tell you that we're going to be cruising at 27,000 feet today. So at the HAVW you, I'm just going to enter our 27,000 feet. Now it's important that you enter your cruising altitude at one of your waypoints, otherwise the VNAV won't accurately be able to figure out what to do for you. Alright, so now that we've entered the highest altitude, now we're going to take a look at the arrival procedure and see what flight restrictions we need to enter in 
to the computer here for our arrival. So the first waypoint on the arrival is the SHNPS. So let's bring up the arrival procedure here so we can show you what's going on. All right, now taking a look at this arrival procedure. Oh, and by the way, if you're unsure about how to read arrival procedures, I'll also post a link down below for our IFR series to show you how to read these arrival procedures. So let's take a look here. We're gonna be coming in on the SHNPS waypoint. By looking at this, we also know this is a fly-by waypoint. We also see here that our minimum safe altitude is flight level 270. So we really don't have any altitudes here that we have to constrain to until we get to the T-bar transition here. Now we take a look at this, we can see that our maximum flight level would be 22,000 feet and our minimum flight level would be 20,000 feet. So you can essentially be anywhere in that vicinity. SH NPS, we're going to be at 27,000, so I'm just going to enter my 27,000 in there. And then I want to go down to the T-bar transition. Now, we could be anywhere between 20 to 22,000 feet, so let's just put 21,000 feet. Hit the enter button, and there we go. Now, if you look up on the VNAV profile now, it's now going to start populating the other altitudes in here for you. Okay, so now from T-bar, to M-N-A-R-K. Let's pull up the continuation arrival procedure and we can take a look at this real quick. All right, so at T-bar, you can see we are at the 22,000 to 20,000. Once we get to M-N-A-R-K, we have to be between 17 and 21,000 feet. Also, right here at the M-N-A-R-K, you also see 250 with a K next to it. You also see that with a line above and below it. That means we must be at exactly 250 knots once we reach the MNARK waypoint. The next waypoint that we're gonna be following is gonna be the BDIVN waypoint. And at this waypoint, you can see we have 15,000 with a line over it. That means we need to be below 15,000 feet at this particular waypoint. Once we get to Cush, we need to be at 14,000 feet and 210 knots. Once we get to the Eldora transition, we now have to be at 13,000 exactly and 210 knots. So as you can see, there's a lot of step downs that we're gonna be doing along the way, and we haven't even gotten to the approach yet. So let's enter these flight levels into our computer. But we're gonna do this a little bit differently. Instead of going down the line and entering each individual one, we're just gonna come right over here to Eldora and enter 13,000 feet. Let's see what happens. So we come down here to Eldora, tap on the flight button, and then add 13,000 feet there, hit the enter. Now, if we scroll up, you can see that the GPS auto-populated these other altitude restrictions in here for us automatically. Now that doesn't mean that we're gonna meet the flight restrictions on the arrival, but a lot of times it's going to be pretty accurate. So let's just bring this kind of half screen here and let's take a look and see what we've got. So at T-Bar, we were at 21,000. At M-N-A-R-K, we need to be between 17 and 21,000, and it will have us at 18,000 feet, so that's perfect. Once we hit to B-D-I-V-N, it's showing here that we'll be at 15,367, and that is not good enough, because we need to be below 15,000. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna click on the BDIVN and just enter 15,000 here. Now we hit the enter button. Now when we did that, you're gonna notice that the Cush waypoint was 14,000, but now it has just went down to 13,8. And if we look over here at the arrival procedure, we need to be at 14,000 feet. So we're just gonna switch this back to 14,000 feet. And there we go. So now everything is pretty much set up for us here. And let's just scroll down to the rest of the approach procedure.
So let's bring up the approach procedure that we're going to be on today so you get a better understanding of what we're going to do here. And again, we need to go through all this to be able to set up the VNAV effectively. We are going to be coming in at the Eldora transition, which is right here at 13,000 feet. Now from Eldora to Fluff, there is no exact flight restriction other than we need to be no lower than 12,000 feet, but no higher than that 13,000. Now from Fluff to Ajax, the lowest safest altitude is 11,000 feet, but there's no real flight restriction yet until we get to COG, and that is at 10,000 feet. So right here, we have it in brackets, 10,000. We also have a minimum safest altitude right here at 10,000 feet. So now that we know those flight restrictions, let's go ahead and enter those. So remember, Eldora was 13,000. There was no flight restriction at Fluff, no flight restriction at Ajax, but there was a flight restriction at COG. So all we need to do is hit that and enter that flight restriction of 10,000 feet, hit the enter button, and it will auto populate those other altitudes in here for us. All right, so now that we've entered all these waypoints in all the way to COG, we need to take a look down here at the lower right hand corner of the approach plate. Now we're going to be coming in at Kaler at 10,000 feet or above. Once we hit to Merkel, we need to be at 10,000 feet. Once we hit Arnold, we need to be above 9,000 feet. And once we hit our final approach fix, we need to be at or above 7,000 feet here. Now we just need to enter these flight restrictions into the computer and we should be all set to go for our VNAV. So at Kaler, we know we're at 10,000 feet. So we're just gonna enter that right now. And if I don't, if I were to add a flight restriction down here, then it would try to descend me past 10,000 feet. So that's why I entered 10,000 here, because that's a uh, restriction there. Also at Merkel is 10,000 feet. So we're also going to add that in as well. And once we got to the Arnold, we know we could be at or above 9,000. So we'll just enter the 9,000. And winter, which is our final approach fix, we need to be at or above 7,000 feet. From that point on, the ILS should bring us in. Perfect, so now that we've got all of those set up, we can just scroll up and just make sure nothing has changed. Everything looks good, so now we can just hit the home button, and I think that pretty much takes care of our entire flight plan as well as setting up the VNAV. You'll also notice up here on the active flight plan inset menu, we have all of our waypoints that started populating up. Now, once we get up in the air, you're gonna see much more information that's gonna show up here, and we will get into that in a moment. But first, let's say we get the engine started on this jet before the sun goes down. Let's actually turn that up a little bit. So all we need to do is come down here to the center pedestal, and right up here is the fuel valve. So we're gonna need to turn that in the open position. Also, by the way, we are using an add-on mod for the longitude, which is the FDE fix from flightsim.to. I will post a link down below for that so you can pick that up because the factory longitude has quite a bit of quirks to it. Anyway, let's start off with the right-hand engine and we're gonna hit the start button that is located right here. So once you do, the stop indicators will turn off here and we're gonna pop up top and check out our MFD screen. Now we're just gonna monitor the N2 percentage and once we get about 20%, we're gonna go down and open that cover above that run button and slap that on. So we're just about at 20%. We can come back down here, open up the cover and hit the run button turn close the cover come back up here to the center screen and we could just monitor the ITT as well as the N2 now once this engine stabilizes we want to come down here to the electrical panel flip the right gen down into reset and back up into the on position so we can get our main generators powering the aircraft 
All right, so it looks like we are just about stabilized right now. Again, we're just going to come down here to the electrical panel, hit this in the reset, and the right gen in the on position. And we're going to keep that bus tie closed because we, until we get both engines running, we are going to make sure we always keep that in the closed position. So now we can go ahead and rinse and repeat for engine number one. Come back down here, hit the start button, back up top side, and we're just going to monitor the N2 one of this engine until we get to about 20%. We're just about there, so we'll step back down here, open up the cover, hit the run button, close that cover, step back up here to the MFD screen, and monitor this until the engine stabilizes. Again, once that does, we're going to come down here to the electronic screen and turn the gen for the left-hand side in the reset and then up into the on position. All right, so it looks like we have now stabilized on engine one, or our left engine. So we're just going to come down here to the gen, hit that in the reset, and back up in the on position. And now we can turn off the APU. So all we got to do for that is just to turn off the APU generator, step on back down here to the center console, hit it in the off position, and we can also turn the APU bleed in the off position as well. Now, if we come back up here to the PFD screen, you're going to see this Gen APU off. I think that's a bug because we're not running on the APU anymore, so that shouldn't be showing. As well as if we turn the standby power off, it's also going to throw us a code here. So I'm just going to leave that standby power on, and I'm going to leave the APU generator on just to keep these lights off. But normally, you would want to turn those in the off position. So now that we have both engines running, we're going to go ahead and open that bus tie. And you can also see here that we have now different amp draws on both engines or both sides of the electrical system. Next, we can come right over here to the right hand side and just hit the pedostatic button. So that will also remove that indicator from the screen. So now there's one other thing that I wanted to talk to you guys about is the auto throttle. So to activate auto throttle, there's a little button right here. And when you hit that, it will activate auto throttle. And whatever speed you have entered into your little speed bug right here, that is what the plane will try to achieve. Now, it's not going to try to achieve that like flight level change. So it's not going to pitch the plane up or down, but it's just going to maintain that particular speed and keep us flat and level. So now that we have the engines running, we just need to set up the autopilot for takeoff. Now the first thing I want to do is enter our Barrow, and you can either get that from the ATIS or just hit that B button on the keyboard and it will set your Barrow for you. Next, I know we're going to be going to 27,000 feet, so we come over here to the autopilot. All we need to do is rotate this alt knob until we get to 27,000 feet. All right, so now we have that set at 27,000 feet. So we're going to be taking off on runway 03. So what I want to do is set my heading bug, which is right here, to the heading of runway 03. Now, if you're unsure about how they come up with runway numbers, if you're at a if you're on runway 03, you're going to be at a heading of right around 030. So we're just going to turn that heading bug until we get to 030. Perfect. So now we have our heading set up. Now what we're going to do is set a couple of these. So we're going to set the heading. And now that's going to, once we hit the autopilot, it's going to maintain the heading that we have in here. The next thing that I'm going to set up is our vertical speed. So I'm not going to use flight level change, but if I was, how I would set that up is I would come right down here to the FMS or manual switch, flick it over into manual, and then I would set this to the speed that I want to climb at. Now again, we're not going to be using speed today, but I'm just going to leave this in the manual setting. So to use vertical speed, again, all you got to do is tap the vertical speed button, and use this dial right here, up or down, to get to the vertical speed that you're trying to achieve. Now, I know we're going to be at about 3,500 feet per minute, so I'll just set it for that for right now. 
And we also want to make sure that we have the flight director in the on position as well. All right, so now that we have all that done, I think uh, we are just about set to uh, get clearance to get out of here. 209 into ground control. We're loaded and ready to taxi. And by the way, if you guys are enjoying the video today, a sub to the channel would be fantastic. And again, if there's any questions, please post those down in the comments section. So let's push off. Bye, Bill. Goodbye, darling. And get taxi in so we can show you the climb procedure of the Cessna Longitude. Hey everyone, if you would like to see the climb to altitude in VNAV, click over here. I want to thank everybody for joining us today, and we will see you on the next one.